Day in the life of a data analyst. Let's go. Hey everyone, my name is Janaid and I'm a graduate data analyst working in London and today I thought I'd take you along with me on a day in my life. Today was a busy day, I was juggling quite a few projects and my calendar was largely booked. So I'll wake up nice and early, I've got a good routine going so I'm trying to stick with it. Usually I'd stay away from my phone in the mornings but today I had to check if anything important had come in overnight or whether I was needed in any calls early in the day since we're working with some quick turnarounds at work. Always without fail I start off my day with a litre of water. I find it's the best way to start my day. I then went for a quick run. I love early mornings during the summer. It's always dead quiet. There's generally not a soul outside. Everyone's asleep. Ever since I started working I realised a lot of my time has been spent in front of a screen and that can't be good in the long term. So I've started to incorporate more outdoor exercise into my routine. After that, I'll get home and do a quick shoulder workout, do some lateral raises and shoulder press just to get some blood pumping in the upper body. Then I'll shower and get ready for work. On the commute to work, I'll listen to a podcast. Bloomberg have a really interesting weekly podcast regarding economics and business finance. Goldman have a really interesting one too. Some of their episodes are really good. My main aim with listening to these podcasts is to learn as much as I possibly can from the high profile guests that appear on them. But I will admit that one or two episodes of The Office Ladies has snuck into my daily commute playlist. Since my morning from 8 to 10 a.m. isn't completely packed, I can enjoy the walk to work a little more. I'll get to my desk and start answering all the emails I've got overnight, updating clients on their requests, uh, collating information from different sources that people have sent me, and just in general getting a feel for the day ahead. I also work on certain sections of a weekly publication that we publish, so I'll start work on that and that becomes something I'll complete in between meetings throughout the day. Unfortunately the work I do is all commercially sensitive and the data I work with is all confidential so unfortunately I can't show you anything on camera but now it's almost time for my first meeting. Just before that meeting starts I'm starting to fall asleep so I'll head out and grab a strong coffee. Along with that I'll grab a granola and yogurt compote since I didn't have any breakfast in the morning. This first meeting was with my manager to discuss all the requests I was working on and to confirm some information sourcing clarifications that I had. We also got a chance to discuss some of the projects I'd be a part of during the summer months and having completed machine learning and computational modules at university my manager wanted to put me in some of the upcoming AI projects. So we planned this months in advance. I've been tasked with staying on top of all the developments and regulations that are coming out regarding AI. In practical terms I've been attending webinars, events, I've been talking with industry leaders. I've been speaking with people like Gary Marcus who's an American psychologist about the ways in which the landscape of work is about to change and how people can best integrate themselves and stay ahead of the curve. Once that meeting's concluded I have an SOP document to update regarding a new database we've been trialing. This will take me to lunch. Just before lunch I'll go and pray in one of the prayer rooms for a moment of solitude and silence in a day that was otherwise full of work. For lunch all the analysts headed out to a new market it we'd found and I will admit I was hungry so I did forget to film. London tends to look great, there are some really nice pockets of outdoor space especially in the centre, the only issue is it's always raining. After lunch I have booked a conference room so I can attend to all my afternoon meetings in there. I'll turn on the AC, it's one of these buttons, I don't know which one it is, but it'll turn on by virtue of elimination. First I have a call with an overseas commission, they're a couple of hours behind us, that's why the call was scheduled in the afternoon. I've contacted them for information regarding financial reports for a company that's registered in their jurisdiction. They're supposed to have an update for me on how to obtain that information, but as it turns out the process was far more complicated than they'd originally described, who would have thought. I think you can actually see the moment that they tell me I have to jump through a few more hoops to get the information I need. After that I'll have a short call with the research team to update them on the call I just had with the overseas commission. Once that call has concluded I'll start work on a modelling tool we're working on. The aim of the tool is to be able to take a number of different parameters for a company and bring them together and place that company on an arbitrary scale so that we can have an idea of where that company lies on the scale and in comparison to other companies within that pool. As you can imagine there's a lot of raw data processing that needs to take place in order for this to happen and this project is slated to take 
at least up to the next 18 months. Quantitative parameters are easy to assess, working with numbers is generally quite easy, but qualitative parameters are just as important. An example of a qualitative parameter for a company would be say quality of management. So distilling that information into a scale takes a fair amount of work. That'll take me to the end of the day and I'm ready to head out the office on time at five and back home. But as it seems the London Underground had some different ideas. Every single train from my station was either suspended or delayed so much so that as soon as I had walked into my station they were shutting it down. So I had to walk 40 minutes to the next available station and adjust my journey home. But the overspill from all the line suspensions and closures had caused quite some rush at the remaining available stations. So I had to wait a few trains to be able to get one that was heading in somewhat of the right direction. It had started raining as I was walking out of my station, but it's times like this when my automatic umbrella is absolutely indispensable. While I was walking home through what seems to be a jungle, you do wonder where your tax money is being spent but I got home at 7pm, which, all things considered, isn't the worst case scenario. At this point I was exhausted, so I had dinner, took a shower, and I didn't want to get into editing an entire YouTube video, so instead I started writing the script for my next one. After about an hour of scripting, I headed up to bed. I did some reading before finally going to sleep at 10.30. And there you have it, a day in my life. If you want to know what my day looks like when I'm working from home, let me know down in the comments and I'll be sure to make a video on that. Well, I hope you liked the video. Follow my Instagram in the description below. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in the next one.